have a booklet here filled with bubble fishing related stuff so I will pick odd item out of this bucket actually I will take every single item out of this bucket and we'll talk about it and hopefully some ideas will be useful in your own bubble fishing about the bucket itself it's a ridge monkey standard size bucket which is quite good and uh, i have to say i was using different buckets before i obtained this one and i have to say that this one is much much better than any other bucket i think because it's quite practical and it has features which other buckets just don't have and uh, i will try to cover those features very quickly so the first of all the lid is kind of it's secure but you can still like remove it pretty quickly and you don't need like to be a Rambo or Schwarzenegger to pull it off then that bucket comes with two boxes which nicely just slide into the top of the bucket and just get fixed there as you can see and also those bait boxes can be like mounted onto the side i hope i will be able to do that because it's been ages since i done that give me a minute i will figure it out and i will put them at some point anyway so yeah here you go and as you can see, you can put one on that side and another one on the other side and it's quite practical if you need that. And uh, I was getting like in one of these boxes my feeders and like... And in another box I used to like mix my ground bait like for that session and uh, like I would put full, full of that bait box of ground bait, like not ground bait but my mix for the day. I will come to the bait itself a little bit later, but yeah, I used to mix just small amounts, amounts more or less of the size of this bait box, just for the day. And if I needed more, I always had some spare bait in my bucket. So yeah, and the bucket is decent size as well. You can put quite a few, uh, quite a bit of stuff in it. Now very very quickly about baiting up hardware if you like. So I will talk about bait dropper and feeders and uh, boilie crusher. So let's start with the bait dropper. When I felt that or I was feeling that I needed more bait during my 100 bubble challenge, I always relied on this bad boy. That's a very very big bait dropper and uh, for you guys who don't, doesn't know what a bait dropper is basically that's a smart device which you can attach on separate rod or on your fishing rod and uh, then you can put your bait inside of that like in the little cup and then you just close the door and you can swing it out into your peg and once this little device hits the bottom kind of it opens itself and the, all the bait goes out obviously and you can get lots and lots of bait very very quickly using this device and uh, of course there are disadvantages of using it basically I was using it uh, up uh, in distances up to 20 meters I would say uh, mainly because uh, I was always like being compact when it comes to my tackle so I didn't want to carry my spare rod uh, the powerful one which I would be able to choke out heavy bait dropper with a bait in so I was using my normal fishing rods and those were just about to swing this device with a bait in it like up to 20 meters uh, and of course when you're swinging it out it's a little bit less of the chance it, it to open on the surface or anything like that if you cast it overhead the chances of uh, it opening when it hits the bottom are uh, much much greater 
So yeah, when I felt that I needed much bait in my swim, that was the way to achieve that. When I was fishing in distances further than 20 meters, I always used to rely on very big cage feeder. So basically it's quite light, I think it was like about 30 grams. So of course I was using that only then when the flow was like suitable for that uh, kind of feeder or the weight of that feeder. And basically all you do is just to chuck it out and then with a stiff rod you, you can shake the bait pretty quickly with, with, uh, uh, from this kind of feeder. And uh, yeah, it, uh, as, as you can see, it's still a decent sized feeder and you can get quite a bit of bait very uh, into the swim very quickly as well. Of course, if you compare these two, I would say probably five or six or even more of, uh, of that feeder volumes can go into uh, one bait dropper. As for the fishing itself, I was using really and always relying on NISA feeders, the uh, largest they do, uh, even though they are not very big. I'm pretty sure that uh, over bar barbell anglers they are using massive feeders, but I felt that the size of NISA large feeders was perfect for what I needed or what I was trying to achieve most of the time. Those feeders are quite small compared, as I said, to other feeders, but the aim of that feeder was to focus the fish on my hook bait line. So where the feeder was, obviously my hook bait was, and the odd fish swimming past and feeding fish definitely would be attracted by a little feeder. And obviously when that fish was going to towards the feeder, my hook bait would be on the same like pass and as feeder is small obviously the fish won't get like too many feed out of one feeder so yeah that was all idea and what i also like about nisa feeder is that the attachment to the rig is like it's not at the base but it's a little bit up so uh, i believed and i think uh, not only believed i proved to myself many times that those nisa feeders do hold bottom much better because what happens when you try to kind of, if the flow obviously pulls the line, which is attached to the feeder, the feeder tries to like lift itself, itself and uh, as a result, those sharp edges do go into the bottom and it kind of snags. <clears throat> and then the last piece of hardware when it comes to baiting up, that's a cheap or cheapish boily crusher if you like. You can get corda ones, you can get uh, any other ones, uh, but most of the time they are the same quality. They are made of very very hard plastic and uh, as long as the boilies are not very hard you will be just fine uh, by trying to crush like decent amounts of them using this device. So yeah, I was using this little cheap device to crush my boilies. Very, very quickly about hook baits. Basically, I was using only two types of hook baits during my 100 bubble challenge. The first was, uh, the first one was spam. Uh, I did put the video together how to mash up the spam using Fox Arma Mesh. I will put a link to that video just in the description. So that was very, very successful. But then when the fish started to feed a little bit better, uh, I went to more practical baits. And of course, mo the most practical baits are boilies. And uh, I used to use boilies, which I bought from my local tackle shop. And those boilies were like, or at least I, I was told that the main contents is in these boilies uh, were like liver powder and some fish meals. Uh, of course, they didn't tell me like proportions and what exactly, but the main idea was, uh, as I said, that it was liver powder and some fish meals. And uh, one like common thing 
between those boilies which I was using and my spammed hook baits or spam hook baits or lunged meat hook baits was that I was using complex T that's a dynamite baits complex T hook bait dip so I used to dip those baits those uh, lunged meat spam and boilies in in that dip and I think that this dip is brilliant. I I really believe that this dip helped me to catch a little bit more fish. And I have to say, when I was fishing with my mates, with other anglers, I don't think that uh, I ever like caught less fish than uh, than they. Once I remember, uh, we caught uh, both with my uh, friend Thomas. So he had free, and I had free as well. Uh, but I think it was mostly to do with uh, location, maybe or the fact because he was fishing a little bit upstream than myself but still i mean i didn't lose uh, on that occasion as well and uh, by the way he was using uh, dynamite bait source pellets i think as far as i know complex t and uh, dynamite bait source are very uh, more like mostly the same stuff just the complex is maybe like pimped or enhan uh, enhanced it in some way so but Still, I believe that complex T probably, if you want to dip your hook baits, is uh, one to go, at least for bubble on the trend. And now about the bait itself, or the stuff which I used to put into my feeder. I will cover how I used to apply that, like in what quantities a little bit later, but about the, like, bait as a essence really so what bait should be used on the trend or what i did find was the best in my opinion the best like bulk feeder content or the stuff you are put, you would be putting into the feeder or in the bait dropper to introduce into in in your swim was some particles trend bubble for some reason they don't really care about like fine ground baits they want some particles so they could eat so they could actually eat the stuff you are putting into the swim and from what i noticed probably the best kind of particles for trend bubble is hemp and then uh, there are maggots and casters and then pellets but of course like maggots and casters and hemp they are quite expensive and uh, not really like practical you have to keep them in the fridge or they will go off and so on and pellets you can keep them anywhere and uh, use them so even though even though the pellets are not the best in my opinion on the trend for bubble but they are good enough and uh, they are very very practical of course they can cause problems with bream uh, but hemp or maggots will cause some problems with bream as well not maybe as big uh, or as like if you like not not as many bream will be attracted by hemp or maggots but plenty of bream will be attracted in uh, by the pellets so what size of pellets i was using i was using mostly like mixture of four mils and and two mils i don't know how well you will, will be able to see but basically those brown ones are four mil and uh, two mil uh, black ones and uh, also i used to pimp those pellets a little bit just to kind of as hemp i believe is the best like bait for bubble i was uh, like soaking those pellets in hemp oil i used to buy like one liter and i used to soak like i would say 10 to 15 kilos of pellets in one liter uh, of course i'm not saying that it's the maximum amount of, of oil you can use you can use as um, much much more of oil like liters and liters of course but you will need more time like to apply let's say liter per 10 kilos give it a couple days and apply another liter and so on but hemp oil is quite expensive one so you don't really want to put too much of it because it will cost a lot so i wanted just to like pimp a little bit so my hook uh, my not hook baits but my bait would stand out a little bit because it would have like a hemp oil in it as well which baba love i believe 
yeah so those are the pellets and now the boil is so i i have to say that for short sessions i noticed that boil is like feeding loose boilies or boilies like in my feed didn't do any good for me so uh, i in the end i cut them out completely but my mix always uh, contained some boilies so my mix always was a simple one so like 50 percent of my pellets so so let's say 25 percent of two mil 25 percent of four mil and then about 50 percent of those crushed boilies just using this device and then you like mix all all that kind of um, particle like soup uh, or not soup until you put some water but once you put some water it becomes a, a soup and then you wait until it like absorbs all the water and then it's perfect for the feeder now very quickly about bait application and how much of bait to put in your swim again i will talk about like perspective of or my point of view when i was fishing short sessions long sessions i mean like 24 hours or something like that can be a different story but most of the time i was fishing let's say on average five hours and uh, at the start i have to say that i made quite a few mistakes i was thinking that I needed to like put a lot of bait just to kind of make a big impact in my swim so I would attract feeding fish quickly but even though I was catching at the start but not very good and having in mind that at the start of the season 2019 the fishing was, wasn't very very good so and the fish weren't feeding very well and i used to put like lots of grub in my in my swim even though as i said i was catching good fish but i was i was thinking uh, well i am thinking now that it was a mistake to put uh, lots of bait in and then during my challenge i started most of the time putting less and less bait and uh, sometimes when i like felt that the conditions were good like it was flooded i was thinking okay i'll put lots of bait uh, using my bait dropper and i and, and i didn't do any good and the next day the conditions used to be most of the time the same if i was able to go next day uh, so the river was still up and the next day i used to use just um, some feeder like introduce bait only through small feeder which is onto the rod and uh, quite often well actually every single session i think when i used to do that was much much more productive than i was you then when i was using bait dropper and i used to introduce lots of bait but again i'm not saying that this is like foolproof way of doing it and it will work all the time it's not like that i think you have to j just like kind of eye uh, eyeball it uh, and every day can't be different and uh, also i have to mention that very very important for me or at least it worked for me very well was that i was kind of applying uh, a match tactics when it comes to recasting most of the time other anglers when fishing for bubbles they just chuck their rods and leave for hours and hours i didn't do that i was leaving my feeder up to half an hour maybe like tops if nothing was happening of course sometimes uh, my feeder was longer uh, on the on the deck uh, well my feeder and my rig was longer on on the deck of the river when i was playing over with fish doing some videos or whatever but when things weren't happening when i was wasn't catching still i was always putting a little bit of bait in my swim constantly and i think that was the key really to constantly catch odd fish also uh, another little like tip for you uh, tip for you guys is that when the water is murky always try to squeeze your feed into the feeder very very hard so basically your feed stays in the feed like i don't know probably for a couple hours so if if you hook the fish and land it and you have some feed in the feeder that's very good but again that applies only then when conditions are like 
poor when it poor when it comes to water clarity and the most in most situations these conditions will be when the river is flooded and or or nearly flooded but yeah in these conditions as i said always at least try to squeeze the bait very very hard so the fish would focus on that kind of feeder but uh, any more or less bait would come out of the feeder so it would be mostly smell or attraction but uh, really one uh, thing the fish could eat would be your hook bait which is attached onto the hook and another little trick which i learned and worked for me on quite a few occasions actually like i was just fishing with two rods most of the time and uh, sometimes I used to use like two feeders, so w one feeder on each rod. But on other occasions I was using just one feeder and one lead. And I used to do it kind of in a clever way. Let's say I would have my feeder just upstream on my upstream rod. And on the downstream rod I would have like my lead. And I used to try to have both my rods like on the same line. So my like first rod, which is which was upstream, was feeding like two hook baits, if you like, and uh, quite often I wasn't able to get a bite on the rod which was upstream with a feeder, and quite often I was getting odd bite on the rod which was on the lead and downstream. Uh, I don't know if I explained it well t for you to understand, so I will <laughs> I will. Uh, make a quick drawing for you so hopefully it will be easier to understand okay so let's say we have a river here so that's a flow that's our banks and we are fishing here so one rod and another rod and then obviously we want to have the feeder on the upstream rod so here we will have a rig with a feeder and of course our hook bait will be somewhere in the mix as well so let's say our hook bait will be there just in line with the feeder more or less and then the second rod should be let's say here that's a lead And that's a hook bait. So, and as you can see, we have the same distances here and here. And as a result, let's say they will be like 15 meters, okay? Let's say 15 meters. And as we have a feeder here, the feed will go will go out of this feeder, and most of the feed will like be around the feeder, and then it will be less and less and less and less and less. But still, odd particle will be will be going through from the feeder through the lead and through the hook bait, and so that will mean that more like careful fish which will not want to go right next to the feeder. They still will be attracted by the feed, but they will be picking odd piece of food very, very like far away from the feeder. And eventually they will find your hook bait. And uh, again, as I mentioned, you are feeding just with one feeder and you are feeding both rods. So yeah, I hope this little painting will be helpful for you. So as you can see that a uh, nice little tip, it just, in my opinion, it just helps to mimic very long hook, uh, hook link. So the rod with the feeder on will act like a, will act like a very, very long hook link. If you imagine the rod with the lead will be, I don't know, 10 meters downstream or so. And then feed will come out of that feeder and it will like feed two hook baits and uh, in, in reality it will be like the feeder will be feeding the hook bait which will be like as I said five or ten meters downstream and uh, it will be like having very very long hook link on the 
rod which has a feeder on, but actually the feed well the hook bait will be on the over rod. That's a little idea and uh, it worked for me very very well in quite a few occasions. <music> And that's it for this video guys. I hope you will find it useful in your own fishing. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions about any other videos I could make about bubble fishing, don't be afraid and leave comments just below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.